Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another video and welcome back to another weekly vlog. So I just wanted to come on here and start off this vlog. I do have an Alcree unboxing to do in just a second, but I wanted to kind of go through um, my books for this week and tell you guys what I plan on reading, what I'm hoping to finish this week, and kind of what my plan is um, moving forward. So I am in the middle of one book in particular, and that is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. I have um, a little bit more than 100 pages to go in this, and I am definitely planning on finishing this hopefully tonight because I, when I tell you that I'm loving it, I am loving it. Um, I have just been gushing about this book since, since I picked it up and I'm just, I'm obsessed and I don't want it to end, but I also really want to know what's going to happen. So I'm kind of on the edge. I think this book is honestly going to put me into a book hangover because I'm just loving it so freaking much and I'm thinking about it all day long. I want to read it all day long. Everywhere I go, I'm like, can I just listen to this book? Can I read this book? It's just been so much fun. I can definitely see why this book is the favorite of the trilogy. Um, and I'm just loving every second of it. And I just don't want it to end. I can definitely see myself rereading the, the series just for this book alone. And I am just so freaking pumped about it. So that that's where I'm at with this. I'm really fucking enjoying it and I cannot wait to finish it. Um, as of today, it is March, not March, April 5th. Um, and I've already finished four books. So if I finish this today, it'll be five books in five days. And you know what? I'll take it. I also have some other plans for the week. I need to pick up Furyborn um, by Claire Legrand. This is my book club pick for the month of April. However, I only have nine days left on the audiobook, so I really need to pick this one up soon. I do have my tabs in here, so I can plan on finishing it um, in those nine days. So I just have to read about 60 pages today, and I'll be good with my section for that. I also have the audiobook for The Black Kids by Christina, Christina Hamonos Reed. This one shouldn't take me too long. It is a contemporary. I do have the audiobook for it, so um, I'm not expecting it to take me too extremely long. Um, but I also, I think this book is just over 350 pages. So again, I'm not expecting that to take me forever. And then um, a buddy read that I'm starting this week is The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. I'm kind of planning on reading this throughout the entire month, so I'm not planning on finishing this this month, I mean this week, but I am buddy reading this with a friend of mine, so hopefully I can finish this some sometime soon, but it is 500 pages. It doesn't look like it's that thick, but it is 504 pages, so hopefully I can get through that quite quickly. I'm also starting two more buddy reads. I know tons of books going on right now. I'm also starting two more buddy reads this week. Um, the first one being the woman's war i don't remember who the author is but i'll put a picture up on the screen and then i'm also buddy reading another ebook which i don't remember so i'll put the picture up on the screen um but those are the two buddy reads that i'm starting this week and i'm a bit overwhelmed i'm not gonna lie but i'm enjoying my time so we are just gonna roll with it all right i also have an owl crate unboxing this is a special edition owl crate book for the third books the third book in the wicked saints series by emily duncan so let's go ahead and bust this open and see what the special edition looks like and then I will leave you to hear my thoughts in the next clip. So here we go. All right. So in this one, we did get a pin for the special edition book. And oh my gosh, this is stunning. My pin flag is quickly filling up and I'm going to need a new one soon. So that's exciting. All right. This is what the pin looks like. It is a like dark tree with some with an eye some spider webs some dripping blood it is very stunning um i definitely cannot wait to add that onto my pin flag that is absolutely gorgeous and then of course we have the freaking worms which you know i hate and then we have the book so let's go ahead and open her up She is thick, let me tell you. This is not a thin book, but it is stunning. This is what the cover looks like. Um, and this is the third book, I believe, in the series. This is The Blessed Monsters, and of course by Emily A. Duncan. This is what the spine looks like. All of the spines look like this. I just don't know um, what the original looks like. This is what the back looks like with some blood splatter and some praise for the book. Um, we have these gorgeous end papers that is stunning. It is indeed signed. And then, oh, we have dust jacket art. Oh my gosh. Um, this says something in another language that I do not know. So there's that. And then as you guys saw, you guys got a glimpse of the under the dust jacket art. But oh my God, this is so beautiful. So we have, I believe, what would be the main character. I haven't read the series yet. So um, I don't really know what the art is supposed to portray. But it looks like we've got some 
some person burning on the on this on this on the what am I trying to say on on the stake no they're not burning at the stake what are they what what is she burning <laughs> Um, maybe like witch trial burnings. I'm not going to read the synopsis of this because it is obviously the third book in the series, but um, that's what the spine looks like. This is absolutely gorgeous. We have deckled edges as well, so that is just stunning. It's a fantastically well done book. I will definitely put the original cover up on the screen for you guys so you can take a look and see what Alcrit changed because they don't give you like a pamphlet in the special editions. Um, so that way you guys can see the difference. But this is the Alcrate edition and this is the original. Um, I'm very excited. Thank you so much to Alcrate for giving me the opportunity to review this. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys didn't know, I am an Alcrate rep, so I will leave all the information for Alcrate down below. Um, I don't believe that the 10% off goes for exclusive box boxes, but if you did want to get a discount on your regu regular monthly boxes with both Alcrate and Alcrate Jr., you can do that with my code down below. If you have any questions about that, feel free to let me know. But that is the end of this very, very long intro i'm gonna go lay down and spend some time with my husband read a court of mist and fury and just have a good night so i will talk to you guys later hello friends good morning i hope that you're doing well it is tuesday and i just wanted to give you guys an update so um last night i went on a reading rampage and i finished a court of mist and fury i probably read a good 200 pages of this yesterday and finished it and i loved it i loved it so much i gave it a five star it was fantastic and it left me in such a book hangover that I had to scrap my entire TBR to pick up A Court of, Rings and a Court of Wings and Ruin. Um, and <laughs> I read half of it last night. I read 350 pages of this last night in one sitting. I just needed to know. I needed to know the answers. I read till 2 o'clock in the morning. I picked this up at 9.50 and read until like 2.40. Like I was like fucking just blowing through it. I... Oh my god, like, I, I still can't believe I read half of this, um, but I needed the answers. I still need the answers. I left off on, like, a pretty much a cliffhanger in the middle of the book, and I'm like, come on, please. So I will be listening to this on my way to and from work because I just, I I have no self-control. Like, I, I really needed to read it, and I don't think there's any way that I could have, like, with good conscience, um, read the rest of my TBR without feeling like I was missing something. So this needs to be finished. And then I will try to barrel on with the rest of my TBR and hopefully not get sidetracked and behind on the rest of my reading because I still have a ton of books that I need to read this month. But, um, oh, well, needless to say, I'm loving it. It's amazing. The characters, the the, the plot. You know, I, I think a lot of people think that when they read fantasy romance that there's not a plot, but these books have a plot. Let me tell you. Like, I'm sitting here, like, chewing my nails, like, trying to figure out what the heck's gonna happen. And the second book... There's not very many fantasy books that have elicited emotion for me. I, I cried a lot of contemporary. I cried a lot of nonfiction. Um, but fa like fantasy romance, there's not a lot of books that will make me cry. And Sarah J. Mass, both of her books, House of Earth and Blood and A Court of Mist and Fury, have made me cry. So um, way to go. Way to go, Sarah J. Mass. This is why I love you so. And I'm just, I'm living my best life. It's basically what I'm trying to tell you. But now I'm going to go to work because I'm currently running a little bit late. And I will talk to you guys when I get back. Hello friends, I hope that you guys are doing well. I just wanted to come on here really quickly and give you guys a quick update on my reading as well as I have an Amazon package that I wanted to open, so I figured I would do that on camera. But um, I wanted to give you guys an update on a, on a Court of Wings and Ruin. Um, I made a good chunk of the way through this. I read about another 100, like a little bit less than 100 pages, probably more like 80 pages on my way to and from work listening to the audiobook. And I'm currently on page 435. Um, this book has 700 and... 703 pages so still a good chunk to read but I do plan on staying up tonight and just finishing the rest of this because that will mean that I ha will have read six books in six days and I'm here for it um that is Bailey no that is currently my update for that I'm really enjoying it like sad that it's going to end excited that I'm reading it loving the characters and dying every time something even close to that happens to the people that I love and care about in this book so much that I <laughs> last night I was reading the book and um, I went to like read an, a very tenuous and scary for me scene and I had my Apple watch on and I looked at my heart rate and I was going like 125 beats per minute and I was like I'm about to hyperventilate reading this book but I'm enjoying it so much um I'm gonna open this this is a pre-order uh, a pre-order that I ordered last month was it in March 
when, when, what month is this? Yeah, March. Okay, good. <laughs> so last month. Ah, so pretty. I got my pre-order for House of Hollows by Crystal Sutherland in the mail today. And look at that cover. It is absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh. Um, Crystal Sutherland was the author um, of the book that we um, did for the group book for um, Spring into Reading a Thon this year. And um, I just, I knew that I needed this book in my hands. It is a lot smaller, like shorter than I thought it was going to be. It's just uh, under 300 pages. So uh, a short but a short book by comparison, but it says Iris Hollow and her two older sisters are unquestionably strange. As children, they disappeared on a, Scot on a Scottish street only to return a month later with no memory of what happened to them or where they'd been. More troubling, their appearances began to change. Their blue eyes now black, their dark hair now white, and as they grew older, odd eerie occurrences seemed to follow them in their wake. People find them disturbingly intoxicating, unbearably, unbearably beautiful, and inexplicably dangerous. Now 17-year-old Iris is going is doing all she can to fit in and graduate school on time. Um, something her two famous, glamorous, globe-trotting older sister, Gray and Vivi, never managed to do. But when Gray goes missing, leaving behind bizarre clues as to where as to her whereabouts, Iris and Vivi are left to find her. But they aren't the only ones looking. As they brush against the supernatural, Iris quickly realizes that the story she has been told about their past is unraveling, and the world that returned them surprisingly unharmed 10 years ago might just be calling them back again. Dark, Darkly seductive, this twisted modern day fairy tale by critically acclaimed author Crystal Sutherland is gripping and terrifying journey. Readers will not be able to look away. This just sounds like it's going to be amazing. I'm really, really excited to give this one a go. And I'm hoping that I enjoy it as much as I did her other book because that one was really amazing. So awesome, super freaking awesome. I'm really excited to um, read this one. And yeah, so that's my current updates. I am... I'm sad that I kind of threw away my TBR for this, but I'm still hoping that I can get back on track after I finish this. I'm gonna force myself not to re read A Court of Frost and Starlight um, because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll get the conclusion that I need in book three uh, because A Court of Frost and Starlight, Starlight is just a novella. So I think that I'll be able to withstand um, until next month before reading that book. But I'm going to read this. I'm gonna plan out a bullet journal spread for the rest of the month seeing as I haven't done that yet. And um, Isaac went to go get me food. And that's pretty much it. So those are my updates. I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Hi friends, how are you? I just wanted to come on here and talk books. Um, I do have some updates for you. Um, and I don't think you're going to be surprised on my updates. <laughs> uh, well, first and foremost, I would like to let you know that I finished A Court of Wings and Ruin. Um, I loved it. Um, there are now only two books um, that have made me sob. Sob. Um fantasy books, I will say, like this. And they're both Sarah J. Mass books. In the, in the second book, I cried, but I didn't sob. In this book, I was sobbing. I don't know why Sarah J. Mass loves to rip my heart out because I'm just not ready for it. Every single time, I'm just not ready for it. So what I'm trying to tell you is, um, I loved it, I gave it a five star, it was amazing. I can't really say anything else other than the, those thoughts because um, a lot of the, the reasons why I love this book are big spoilers. Um, and a lot of the other things that I loved about this book, I talked to you guys in the last book, is the same. I love the characters. I love the, the, the companionship that these people offer each other. I love the found family. The inner circle is one of my favorite character groups I've ever read about. Hi, Bailey. <laughs> um, and it's just, it makes me absolutely happy to watch them together. And it just, I love it. I love every single freaking second of it. And, um, the connection between the two main characters is something of beauty and I just I love it I love it I love it I love it there's so many quotes in this book that I absolutely loved there was a quote that um one of the characters said that I want to get tattooed on my body and it's just I loved every minute of it Sarah J Mass just kills me every time and I just love it I love it so um remember earlier when I said that I was gonna hold out and not read a court of um Frost and Starlight I lied. I, I also read this one, um, <laughs> but I will let you know, I have no plans of reading A Court of Silver Flame um, this month, so I will give myself a pat on the back for that one because I have no self-control when it came to the original four books in the series, um, and the novella was really good. I gave it a five star. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was definitely a nice palette cleanser, I think, especially if you just wanted a little bit more of these characters. I love that um, Sarah J. Mass took the time to get inside of some of the other 
uh, perspectives that we didn't get. We know a lot of their, their life and their story, but we didn't get a lot of their perspectives. So we got a little bit of more in here. Um, we got a little bit of Cassian in here, which we will see in um, A Court of Silver Flame. Um, yeah, and we, we got a lot, a lot more of Rhysand's perspective because we only get a couple of those through the, three, the first three books. So, I don't know. I just, I loved it. I loved it so much. And my heart is happy to know that I have finished these. I can't believe I finished basically most of the series aside from A Court of, uh, what is it called? A Court of Roses. Thorn, I can't even say it. A Court of Thorns and Roses. Um this this week because I just plowed through all of them but really enjoyed them so happy that I read them I also am in the middle of another book I believe it's the Lady Devices series I am buddy reading that with um someone on Instagram and so I I read the first 50 pages of that via ebook last night and I'm a little bit confused about it if I'm being honest the plot is not super strong in those first 50 pages so I don't really know where it's going plus it's set in in the past and um the setting is just really hard for me to wrap my head around it also, it's also steampunk which is something that i've never read before so it's all a little bit different for me but it is going to be my self-published read for this month so i'm hoping that i enjoy it it's only about 250 pages so it's quite short but i'm hoping to get through that one um but as of this today i have read seven books in seven days which is absolutely insane and i've already read 2900 pages I don't know how that happened, but I'm feeling good about it. So um, that is my update for right now. I'm going to get the vlog ready that's going to go up for you guys today. I have my ther therapy appointment at 2, and then I have about 30 minutes to chill before I have to leave for work. So I can I'm only working two hours today. I'm working 4 to 6, and then I will come back home and do some more reading. I would definitely love to get um, a little bit of a head start on um, Furyborn since I'm well behind on my little post notes that I put in there. And then I also have the audiobook for the black kids that I really need to get around to reading at some point as well. So yeah, I will talk to you guys when I have some more reading updates to give you that pertain to this vlog. Hello friends, I hope you guys are doing well. I just wanted to come on here and let you guys know what I was able to read over the last couple days. It's currently Friday. I didn't, I didn't talk to you guys yesterday, but I did read yesterday. And um... Yeah, I think that's the last last time I talked to you was on Wednesday when I finished up A Quarter Frost and Starlight. But yesterday I did come home and read This Train is Being Held by Esme Williams. I ended up giving this book a three star. It wasn't terrible. I just think that the character was a little bit unlikable and a little bit unsufferable. And for that, it just made it a little bit harder for me to want to read. Um, this follows a girl named Isabel and a guy named Alex and they meet on the train station in New York and they tend to um, ride the train around the same time and so they run into each other quite often and they create a relationship through um, their correspondence together um, on the train and um, Esme is a dancer and she's really dedicated to that. She has a very hard home life, both of the main characters do. Um, and Alex is a baseball player whose father is really hard on him to make baseball his whole life. And so he, neither of them really have time for a relationship, but um, they look forward to the times they meet on, on the train and their relationship spans over two years. Um, there is definitely some, some interesting um, talks in here so there is trigger warnings for alcoholic um tendencies there's trigger warnings for depression and anxiety um attempted suicide um so there's definitely some some harder topics in here and i think that that was the reason why i rated the book so highly if it wasn't for some of the um more harder topics and some of the interesting conversations that were in this book i don't think i would have rated it as high um both of the main characters are um one is cuban and the other one is Dominican and so they have different backgrounds from each other but um Esme is white passing and Alex isn't and so this book definitely talks a lot about racial profiling and um how Mexican people especially where they live are perceived and the automatic assumptions that they have in regards to how they will treat others when they are out and about and so um it's also talked about here in in, in regards to police police brutality and the privileges that people that look white or are white have whereas people of color don't have and so that situation was talked about really well and I really enjoyed that aspect of it but other than that the main character was just so insufferable and she was constantly making decisions that was just self-sabotaging self and very hard to watch and very frustrating but overall I liked the romance and I like how it came together it just wasn't my favorite book of all time definitely not a book that I see myself rereading but I am really glad that I read it I think that it had some really awesome top topics broached some really important conversations I just don't see myself rereading reading it again but um I want to say thank you to Mel for sending this over to me I'm really glad that I read it I just don't think that I'll 
we read it. So that being said, I gave it a three star. I read it. That means I have now finished eight books in eight days. It's currently the ninth and I do plan on picking up another book today. The book that I would like to read today is The Black Kids by Christi Christina Hamonos. I think it's an O. Ham I don't know how to say her middle name. Christina Reed, that's what I'm going to say. And this is set in the 90s right after what happens to Rodney King and um, the main character, I believe her name is Ashley, yeah. The main character Ashley is very um, well known and popular in her school, but after what happens to Rodney King, she becomes one of the black kids and is definitely, um, you know, I wouldn't say ostracized because of that, but um, it makes her life a little bit more interesting to say the least. And I'm really excited to see the way that this author will um, tackle again, racial profiling and um, police brutality and things like that. So I'm really excited to give this one a go. Um, the main character is black, the author is black, and so I'm really hoping that the representation in here is done really well. I don't think that it won't be, but I'm really curious to see how this one goes. So I'm excited to read that one today. I don't know if I'll finish it, but I also plan on finishing um, the ebook that I'm reading, the Lady Devices series. Um, it's, I only have about an hour left on the audiobook, so I'm going to listen to that. Um, later on tonight and finish that up. So it'll be my ninth book of the month on the ninth of the month. So I am, I'm happy about my reading this month. I've already filmed my TBR for May because I only had two books left. The only other book that I need to read for my actual TBR is The Gilded Ones by Namita Forna, but I won't get my audiobook for this until the 18th of the month. So that's going to be put on, on the back burner for now. And then I also have some secret TBR videos that I am in the middle of filming. So I will also be focusing on those books. Um, sometime this week, but we'll see. So that's my update for now. I will talk to you guys in a little bit when I have some more exciting things to tell you. Here we go, here we go again. Trying hard, but you want to be my friend. Ain't no place to hide, ain't no one to run to. Here we go, here we go again. Call my bluff, I'm gonna be you to the end. I'm the one you ride, I'm the one you ride to. Friends, I just wanted to come on here really quickly and um, talk over some books. I ended up going to work um, today for a couple of hours just to help out my coworker, um, but I am now back home and I have a book update. Um, first off, I have um, The Black Kids by Christina Hamones Reed. Ugh, every time I fuck it up, every time. And I'm currently on page 52, not a huge chunk into this just yet, but I did start it. I I'm going to try to finish this one today. We'll see how that goes. The audiobook says that it should only take me another, um, like two and a half hours to finish this. So I'm not expecting it to take me too long, but so far I'm enjoying it. Um, it follows Ashley who um, is um, living in 1990s LA and it's right after Rodney King was beaten by the cops and um, she has now become the token black kid um, in her neighborhood and at her school. And um, she's really struggling to try, to try to figure out where she fits in and how she feels about the things that are going on to her community. So, um, so far so good, I'm enjoying it. We'll definitely see how that plays out. I also picked up um, Furyborn on my way to work, to work and I read probably the first three chapters or so. It was, I was about an hour into the audiobook and I just found that I was very confused. So I'm going to um, restart that book physically and read alongside the audiobook just because I want to make sure that I'm fully comprehending what's going on. But from the first chapter, I knew that I was gonna like this book and so far I'm really enjoying it. I just wish that I knew a little bit more about the characters and the world. So I'm gonna go back, reread the, the first couple of chapters that I read and uh, start over with the audiobook and the physical book. And then I also picked up two books while I was at work. I picked up the um, fifth book in the Mortal Instruments series. I still need to pick up the fourth and the sixth book because those are the only two I'm missing. But every time they come in with the matching spines that I like, I pick them up. Um, and so th this is what I they had today. And so I just need the, the fourth and the sixth one. And I'll have my full com com complete collection of the Shadowhunter books for the... Well, all of them, actually. I own all of them. So that's cool. And then um, I picked up The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by... Um, like Larson Stein or Stein Larson, something like that. Um, uh, my coworker was just talking about how much she really enjoyed it. And I watched um, Emily Fox, book with Emily Fox. She read this last month and really enjoyed it. And so I figured I would pick it up and give it a try. I know it's mystery, thriller book. Um, and so I'm really excited to give this one a go. So yeah, those are the two books that I picked up and the book that I'm now in the current, whoa, I just threw it. And the book that I'm currently in the middle of reading, so. Those are my updates. I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Hi guys, I just wanted to come on here and give you guys a quick update. Don't mind Bailey, she's running around. She just got a bath, so she's trying to figure out what to do with her life now. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an update. I didn't do any more reading since the last time I talked to you. I've been going through some stuff, so um, I haven't done any more reading. I will get some more reading done tonight so that I can finish another book. But I've been just been taking it easy, chilling. I got my nails done today, so 
that's something new but i haven't had my nails done since i was i got married which was almost two years ago now so i felt like it was a, a much needed self-care thing to get my nails done i chose like a like a green color i wanted it to be some some type of spring color but my color my my uh, uh skin tone is what i meant to say my skin tone doesn't seem to do well with like pastel colors i've tried them before and i don't like the way they look on my hands so i went with like a darker green i like it it's new and different but i also went to target and i picked, picked up some stuff so i figured i would show you guys what i was able to grab so first off i just got some batteries nothing exciting nothing exciting about that um i bought my batteries as well as um, some more film for my um, Polaroid camera and some more film for my Polaroid camera. Um, Isaac and I got this like um, scratch off date book and for the dates that you're supposed to like take a Polaroid picture and, and stick it in there. So I needed some more film and some more batteries for that camera. I also picked up a necklace that is now tangled. Um, it's like a layered necklace that has matching earrings. So it has this really cute like um, marbled gray and black pendant um, and then earrings that go along with it. These are what the earrings look like. Really simple and cute. I just wanted some more gold jewelry to go along with that. And then I picked up two books. One of them is not gonna be any surprise to you guys because I have a problem, but I picked up another copy of House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. It's the paperback and it's just, it's so floppy and they were selling it for cheap and there was no way that I could pass it up. So I got myself a paperback copy of this, which will just go up on my Sarah J Mass shrine up there at the top. Um, but somebody already tried taking off the Target sticker. So I'm gonna, Hopefully not ruin the book by taking off the rest, but um, I saw, who did I see? Somebody somebody was talking about this paperback edition and I was like, I need it. So found it at Target for cheap, so I picked it up. And then I also picked up The Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. And this is a fake dating male male romance book. Um, on the back it says, um, Luke O'Donnell is tangibly and reluctantly famous. His rock star parents split up when he was young and his father and the father he never met spent the next 20 years cruising in and out of rehab. Now that his dad is making a comeback, Luke is back in the public eye, and one compromising photo is enough to ruin everything. To clean up his image, Luke has to find a nice, normal relationship, and Oliver Blackwood is as nice and normal as they come. He's a barrister and an ethical vegetarian, and he's never inspired a moment of scandal in his life. In other words, perfect boyfriend material. Unfortunately, apart from being gay, single, and really, really in need of a date for a big event, Luke and Oliver have nothing in common. So they strike up a deal to be publicly friendly, fake boyfriends, until the dust has settled. Then they can go their separate ways and pretend that it never happened. But the thing about fake dating is that it can feel a lot like real dating. And that's when you get used to someone, start falling for them. You don't ever want to let them go. And it also says, hilarious and poignant, you root for Luke and Oliver from the beginning from beginning to end, Chris Reaper. So, Ripper, not Reaper, <laughs> Ripper. And it's also blurred by Christina Lauren, so I figured I would pick this up. I love a good fake dating romance. I love a good male-male romance. I'm loving the representation. And it looks like it's gonna be set maybe in Britain. Um, so that's really cool as well. I'm just really excited to give this one a go. So a book I didn't really need and a book I didn't really need, but I got them anyways. So there's that. That is my update for now. I'm gonna work on this Target sticker and wait for my husband to get home and then we're gonna go to dinner, so that's my update for now and hopefully i will come back with an actual reading update very very soon okay so sorry if you guys can hear my fan going on i have i had to spray some stuff for bagley and it smells really bad so i'm trying to air out the house right now but i wanted to show you guys how cute these earrings and this necklace set is on it is just so adorable i love it um i just i needed some more accessories and stuff in my life because i don't have a ton of necklaces and earrings that i wear on a you know, semi-daily basis, and I just, I love how cute these are. We'll see how they, they go throughout the day, because I'm one of those people that I have a really bad reaction to earrings, especially heavy earrings, and these ones so far aren't hurting my ears, but I'm curious to see, like, how long I can wear them for before that they, they start irritating me, but I love the fact that it matches the necklace, and it's really, really cute, so that is my, uh, my earring and necklace update, and I'm waiting for my husband to get home so we can go eat, because I am starving, so I will talk to you guys then. Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. I finally have a reading update for you. I'm just about to get onto a live stream with um, some booktubers and um, we're just gonna do some live reading shrimps um, for the next couple of hours, I think. So I just wanted to come on here and quickly give you an update. I was buddy reading um, a book with um, one, someone that I follow on Instagram as well as a fellow booktuber and um, it was The Lady of Devices. It's the first book in a series. It's a um, historical fiction, steampunk um, book. It was self-published and so um, I picked this one specifically because I wanted to read a self-published book. Um, I didn't hate it, but I also didn't love it. I ended up giving the book a uh, three star. It was a very, very low three star, um, bordering more on like a 2.5 um, to three star, but 
Um, it like follows this lady named Claire who is just about to turn 18. Um, and they're very much in the time of like, horse and carriages are still very prominent, but um, railroads and locomotives are just starting to become a thing. And so her father passes away and they find out that he basically squandered their fortune on an investment that went bad. And um, she's eventually pushed out of her house due to some riots that are happening because her father had a bit, big stake in this um, and a lot of people lost money. And so she ends up on the streets and she ends up with this ragtag group of kids that she is now taking care of and um, bringing up on her own. And it's the story of that. And it was, it just didn't have a ton of plot. Um, I didn't really care for the characters. The kids were cute sometimes, but other than that, I didn't really feel any attachment to them. So it, it's, it is what it is. I read it. It was a three star. I'm, I'm happy that I read it because I'm definitely weeding out different things, especially in historical fiction that I just don't like. And, um, this like theme of like steampunk locomotive, um, time frame in, in historical fiction is just not for me. So, um, I read it. I'm done with that. Um, I'm going to do live sprints soon and I haven't decided what I'm going to read. I'm either going to pick up some more of the black kids, um, or, uh, Fury Born by Claire Legrand because I really want to get started on this one or I also might uh, listen to a book that I'm reading for my other vlog um which is a secret TBR so I'm, I haven't really decided what I'm reading just yet but I will give you guys an update with some book updates when I have one if I actually read a book for this vlog so I will talk to you guys in a little bit okay so I'm since I'm waiting for my husband to um finish getting ready we we're about to head out on our date but I wanted to give you guys an update on um what I read during the live show that I was a part of um thank you so much to CC for having me it was a blast um but I did go ahead and get into Fury Born by Claire Legrand and I am 84 pages in um and I'm really really enjoying it so far I like the storytelling I like the multiple perspectives the different timeline that's very interesting and I'm very intrigued for sure but I'm definitely hoping to get some more into it either tonight when I get home or tomorrow depending on how we feel when we get back from uh our date um but yeah I'm just getting ready to go I busted out my wedding shoes and everything like we're going all out and I'm very excited for it so I will talk to you guys when I have another update or if not I don't if I don't talk to you guys today then I will talk to you guys tomorrow to close out this vlog so I will see you soon <laughs> hi guys i just wanted to come on here and close out this vlog i apologize for the lighting um isaac is currently cooking in the other room but i did want to come out and close this vlog because i have some other stuff that i would like to get done tonight so i figured i would just close it out and i apologize for the background but um let's go ahead and talk over the books i was able to read this this week and then the books i'm still in the middle of and um hopefully the next couple of weeks of um what month are we in? April goes well and I can finish the rest of the books that I had planned for this month. I'm basically done with my TBR. I only have two books left on my TBR um, and I'm in the middle of one and I'm not going to start the, the next one until the 18th so I have some time. So um, hopefully all goes well but the first book that I finished this um, week was A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. I basically read, not basically, I read the entire series up until um, A Court of Silver Flames this week, so I might as well just talk about them all together since I don't want to give spoilers, but I will talk about my feelings. I um, read, finished this one this week, start and finished it, started and finished this one, and then picked up the um, last little novella in this particular um, portion of the series, and I loved it. I gave every book in the series five stars. It was amazing. I really enjoyed my experience. I love these characters. I will die for these characters. They have a special, special, special place in my heart, and I cannot wait to reread these. I have thought about this book series every day since I finished it, and I am doing everything in my power not to pick it back up and reread it just because I really need the back of my life. So, um, needless to say, I loved it. It was amazing. Um, I get there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, hate for Sarah J Mass, especially right now because everyone is talking about these books on TikTok and Bookstagram and talking about how they're underhyped, which they are not. It, this series is very well loved and very well known, and I know that Sarah J Mass has some issues with inclusivity which, you know, it, it's a, it's an issue, but um, I still love these books for what they are and what they bring into my life and the amount of joy that I get from them. So I'm going to continue to read Sarah J Mass, but I will obviously continue to read diversely as I do with everything else as I continue on with my reading. So I have no problems reading her books and enjoying them and loving them and still calling her my favorite author of all time because every time I read a book, she just knows how to bring me joy and happiness. So Thank you, Sarah, for that. 
And the um, next and last book that I finished this week is This Train is Being Held. Actually, no, I finished another book this week. Um, but I did finish This Train is Being Held. This is by Esme Williams. I gave this book a three star. I thought that it was okay. It wasn't my favorite book that I ever read. Um, I enjoyed the aspects of um, uh, racism and, you know, societal... Um, societal norms and the way that people see people of color and how they presume um, they will be treated and the way that they will act based off the color of their skin. I like the conversation was in here quite a bit. I like the fact that it was in first in, in what it was indeed diverse is what I was trying to say. And um, for for the most part, I like the characters. I think that the main character was a little bit insufferable and really hard to like at times. But um, I enjoyed the romance. I thought it was cute. Um, I liked how it was spread out over two years. I like the fact that there was some talk of dancing in here, which I, I find that I really enjoy in books when it talks about um, dance or um, music in any aspect. I like like singing um, main characters that sing or dance or do anything with music. I really enjoy that. So um, but I will say that as I've gone on throughout the week like I've forgotten a lot of the things that happened in this book and um it's just not a very memorable book for me uh there is also some trigger warnings in here for um uh alcoholism as well as um attempted suicide and depression so go into it lightly if those things are triggering to you but um just a heads up on that and I did enjoy it I just don't see myself rereading it or keeping it on my shelves I also finished a um ebook which was The Lady of Devices, the first book in the Lady of Devices series. And I gave this book a three star. It was a very low three star, um, bordering on a on a two star. Two star. If uh, Goodreads did, you know, half stars, it would be more like a 2.5. But um, it, it just wasn't a memorable book. It wasn't a memorable ebook. Um, and the, the plot really wasn't there. The characters didn't really have a super large amount of, um, you know, what am I trying to say like growth and progression in their storyline and it was just okay um I honestly don't really remember what happened in this book and I just finished it a couple of days ago so there you go um and then the two books that I'm currently in the middle of for this vlog is The Black Kids by Reed Christina Reed <laughs> I can never figure out what the middle name is and so far I'm liking this I think that um it's a very interesting novel and you know I'm, I'm actually getting this one quite confused with another book that I'm currently in the middle of reading for my secret TBR video they are very very similar in regards to the topic at hand and so um I definitely need to finish one of the two so I can focus on the plot lines at one at a time um but I think that I will be finishing the book for the secret um that secret TBR video today and so then I can really focus on this one and give it my full attention and hopefully enjoy it a little bit more. I'm not too far into it. I'm only on page 65. So definitely still have some more reading to go. But so far, so good. I'm liking the writing style. I'm liking the storyline. I just need to get a little bit more into it. And then I'm also in the middle of um, Fury Born by Clara Legrand. And I'm currently on page 84. And I'm really enjoying this. I like the writing style. I like the um, magic systems. There's some dual timeline perspectives in this book that I'm really enjoying. I still don't quite know what the synopsis of this book is. Um, but we haven't really gotten too far into it to really understand. But we are following a couple of different characters as well as um, very different timelines. One is, I think, a thousand, maybe a thousand years? I, I could be getting that wrong. Um, it's, it's several years in the future from um, the other timeline that we're following, so it's very interesting. The um, abilities that one of the perspectives ha perspective has in regards to uh, a magic, the magic system is very interesting, and then another one of the characters has the ability to, like, basically... I wouldn't say indestructible. I don't think that the person is indestructible, but they bounce back from pain and um, things like that very quickly. And they have a, um, a higher ability to do things that most people wouldn't be able to do with their bodies um, than, than she's able to do. Like she's able to jump off of three-story buildings and land without breaking anything or ha feeling any pain. So she has some abilities. I don't quite know what they are just yet, but I am really intrigued by the... Um, what I have read so far as well as the magic system and the characters. I think it's going to be a very interesting book once I get to the end and I'm really hoping that I have some time to sit down and like just carve out some time to sit down and read this and hopefully really enjoy it because so far I am enjoying it. So that is my uh, update on all of the books that I was currently reading as well as the books I finished. If you want to see how I do for the rest of the month feel free to stay tuned for the rest of my vlogs. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to leave an emoji, an, an emoji. <laughs> if you want to leave an emoji, leave anything 
pink. Any emoji that is pink um, down in the comments below, just to let me know that you made it to the end. Um, and that is it. That is the end of this vlog. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you read any of these books and what you thought about them. Um, let, let me know what you guys decided to pick up during this week. I would love to know that as well. But that is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And of course, leave any comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video.